Good morning, everyone. In just a moment, we're going to hear from the assistant principals as they go over all of the expectations for behavior and conduct that are important for this school year at Bush Middle School. I need you to give them your undivided attention. I need you to listen very carefully to everything that they say. And I need you to remember those important words because good behavior leads to learning. And that's what we're all about at Bush Middle School. Remember, pay close attention and I thank you. Hello students, welcome back to the 2011-2012 school year. I'm Mrs. Moscoro, one of the assistant principals. I will have all of 6th grade and 7W this year. And I'm Dr. R. I have 7X and 7Y and all of 8th grade. In just a minute, you're about to view our expectations for this school year. And these expectations are important, students, because here at Bush, we like to do things the, the Bush, Bush way. way. Arriving to school. Parent drop off area. All students are being dropped off by their parents should enter at the gym foyer from the lower parking area. The upper parking area is reserved only for parents who will be entering the school building. Sixth grade students, you will report to the cafeteria in the morning. If you're eating breakfast, then make sure you go directly to the line. From there, you'll be directed on where to sit. The expectations while waiting in the cafeteria before school include conversations, stay at a low voice with those close to your table, no food or drink allowed, remain seated during the duration of the time until you're excused by an adult to go to class, and have four students on each side of the table. Make sure you pick up all your trash and belongings when you're dismissed. Sixth grade students, once again, wait until your table is dismissed by an adult. Seventh and eighth grade students. In the morning, all 7th and 8th grade boys will report to the gym foyer. In time, you will be excused to go to the gym, and you will wait for the rest of the morning before you are excused to go to class. All 7th and 8th grade girls will report to the bridge area just outside of the cafeteria. 7th and 8th grade students may eat breakfast at designated tables, but they must return to the gym or the bridge area when finished. The expectations while waiting on the bridge or in the gym foyer include no food or drink allowed, no horseplay, and make sure you keep your belongings with you, and make sure you pick up trash when you are dismissed to go to class for the morning. From departing from school, loading buses. Buses will leave at 3.35 promptly. Actively search for your bus as soon as you exit the building down at the gym foyer. We do not hold buses, so listen to the announcements for any bus changes. If we are able to give those to you, we will. Otherwise, actively look for your bus. Buses that are being replaced or have a substitute bus will typically have your regular bus number posted in the bus doorway or the bus window. So keep your eyes open for that. Only any ISD approved form signed by your parent or an administrator will allow you to ride a bus that is different from the one you normally ride. So let's look at the next slide. This is a permission form that is approved for students to ride a different bus than they normally ride. This must be signed by your parents and it must be signed by a school administrator. Please not wait until the last minute to have this signed. Try to find Mrs. Mascaro or Mr. Horry or myself in the cafeteria or in the hallway and let us take care of this for you as soon as possible. You can access this form on the Bush website and you can print it out at home, complete it and have it ready to go for the next day. If you have an emergency or if you have a last minute change, you can pick a hard copy up of this up in the front office. Mr. Warren Holtz, Ms. Gillenwater will help you. Bus expectations. Your school bus is an extension of the school. Therefore, school expectations, conduct, and behavior are the same while on the bus. Misbehavior on the bus will result in a referral to your administrator. And remember that standing on a bus while it's moving is a violation of state law. Your consequences will range from verbal warnings through multiple day suspension. So do your best to follow the expectations of the bus driver while you are on the bus. Parent pickup and walkers. All students being picked up after school by their parents should load at the lower parking area, the same area in which they drop you off in the morning. Remember only to cross at the crosswalk. Also, keep your eyes open and look for your ride and promptly when they arrive. All walkers should leave the campus immediately from the upper parking area 
by exiting the front main foyer doors. Walkers are not expected to escort their friends to the bus area. As soon as class is ended, walkers are expected to go to the front of the building and exit campus from the front of the building. Remember, no loitering or congregating after school. Inappropriate behavior, such as yelling or running or horseplay or using bad language, can result in consequences. Now we're going to take a look at some cafeteria expectations. First, we'll cover breakfast expectations, and then we'll look at lunch expectations. Let's look at some breakfast expectations. Breakfast lines are for those students purchasing food and or drink items only. If you are not going to make a purchase, then you should not be in the line. If you do purchase a food item, then we're going to direct you to a table to sit at. If you're only purchasing a drink item, then we're going to ask you to drink those by the cafeteria doors and then make your way to your waiting areas. Sixth graders, as soon as you're done eating breakfast, you'll be directed over to the other waiting tables in the cafeteria. Seventh and eighth graders, we will direct you back to your waiting areas. Moving on to lunch expectations. We are asking for you to please walk all the way to the cafeteria and walk inside cafeteria. This looks like what it does look like is this. Remember, this is not a race. Please walk to the cafeteria. We don't want to have any accidents. Safety is always first. Lunch options. Once you walk to the cafeteria, if you brought your lunch, you're just going to go find a seat. There are no assigned seats at lunch. If you're buying a hot lunch, which now we're going to refer to as the savory lines, go directly to those lines. If you are eating from the snack bar, which will now be known as the grill, we ask that you walk in towards the stage and wait until directed. All right, key points while waiting in line. Please remember to keep your conversation between the people immediately around you. You do not need to call out to people across the cafeteria. Blocking the front of the stage. We do not want you to line up in front of the stage. Watch and stop at the stairs. There will be adults to direct you. Also, we've pointed out the stairs by the stage, which is where you need to stop for the grill line. We're asking that you use stairs at all times. Please do not jump onto or off the stage area. Okay, first expectation. We only want four people per side. As you see in the picture shown, we squeezed in more than four people. So please monitor your table and keep four people per side. When you're at your table, feel free to join in conversation, but make sure that you keep it with a low voice and only with those at your table. We ask that you raise your hand if you need to get up from your seat. Once you're at your table, you need to remain at your table. If you need to use the restroom, then you need to make sure that you ask permission. When we get ready to dismiss from the table, we're going to ask that you pick up all trash. We really don't care whose trash it is. When you're at the table, you need to be responsible for the entire table. So please make sure that the table gets picked up of all trash. This includes all trash around you, under your table and beside your table. When you get ready to throw your trash away and put your trees up, we have a couple of expectations. In our second picture, we have two gentlemen stacking their trays. We ask that you be very careful when stacking your trays. Take a little bit of time and stack them appropriately. Bush does recycle. So in the gray trash cans, only food items. But in the blue recycle cans, we want your plastic, paper, and styrofoam. The only thing you need to remember is to please empty your drink containers before you recycle them. Don't forget to say thank you to those people in the cafeteria that help. Remember, Bush Bulldogs always remain respectful and we're polite. A last couple of items on cafeteria expectations. 
Please make sure that you monitor your money in your account. Always remember to check that so that you don't get in trouble and not have enough money to cover your lunch. Also, we ask that you not buy food for others. This includes when parents bring you that special meal from McDonald's or Pizza Hut. They are only allowed to bring food for you. You're not allowed to bring a large pizza and share it with other students. This is just not allowed in the cafeteria. Also, no binders or book bags are allowed in the cafeteria for 6th and 7th graders. If you're an 8th grader, you're allowed to bring your book bag. That concludes our cafeteria expectations. Bon appetit! Students, let's now look at what to do between classes. This is called the passing period. Between classes, these are our hallway expectations of four minute passing periods. So use them wisely. Remember, this is your time to visit your locker and to use the restroom. Always stay to the right in the hallway or the stairs and remember to keep moving. We walk and we talk. We move and we groove. You're not allowed to congregate in the hallway and you're expected to keep on moving. Running, pushing, and other types of horseplay will be subject to consequences. So, keep your direction to your classes and keep yourself moving. For those of you that struggle with this, we have a tardy policy. For instance, four tardy slips would equal three days lunch detention. If you accumulate seven tardy slips, you'll have three days after school detention. Tardy start over a semester. And for those of you that earn school detention, it's Monday through Thursday from 3.30 to 4.15. But let's not do this Let's stay away from the tardy policy and let's be on time and be moving to class. In a minute, we're going to look at some examples of what not to wear. But I want to remind you that you can review the dress code brochure on the Bush Middle School website at any time. The big picture here with dress code is we want you to look in the mirror each morning before you come to school and ask yourself if you're meeting dress code expectations. If in doubt, wear something else. Remember that there are consequences for violating the school dress code. The first violation will be a warning. The second violation will be a day of after school detention. And the third violation will be a day of EMC. You will be asked to change clothes immediately after every violation. If you're unable to secure a set of clothes from a parent or guardian, we do have items in the office that we will ask you to change into. Now let's look at some examples of what not to wear. Let's look at our first example. This covers sleeveless shirts. Girls, halter tops, strapless tube tops, spaghetti straps, and tank shirts are not permitted. You need to make sure that your shirt covers the entire shoulder area. Every shirt you wear should have a sleeve on it. Layering shirts to achieve covering the entire shoulder area is not permitted. There should be no skin seen on the shoulder. So make sure your shirt has a sleeve. Remember that if you have a sweater or a hood jacket and it keeps falling off and you have a tank shirt underneath, you will be in violation of dress code. At all times, your shoulder needs to be covered up. Boys, athletic jerseys can be worn, but you must have a shirt underneath. So as you see in our example, we have a lovely Spurs athletic jersey. The only problem is we need a shirt underneath. Looking at number two, we see a pair of boxer shorts. And the idea here is, is we don't want to see them. Undergarments shall not be visible or exposed for males or females. Number three, jeans. This is a popular thing, and this includes jeans, but could also include pants. There should be no torn or ripped clothing, even if you have patches or leggings underneath. We are not going to repair these with tape or safety pins. If you have holes in your jeans, they need to stay at home. Wear them on the weekends, but keep them off the Bush Middle School campus. In the fourth example, we're going to be addressing skirt and short length. Remember that skirts and shorts must be past fingertip length when hands are by the person's side. 
even if you have leggings on. In the picture, you can clearly see that her skirt is shorter than her fingertips. Girls, remember that any type of running shorts are not permitted. They're too short. Number five, the big idea here is be modest. No low-cut tops in the front or the back. Choose a higher neckline on your tops. Number six, no midriff showing. Yes, even if it is that little as shown in the picture, we should not see any skin at all. Looking at number seven, we're addressing no slippers or pajama type clothing. This includes pajama bottoms and tops as well. Please keep these at home. Number eight, no graffiti or writing on clothes or skin. Yes, I said skin. We need not to write on our arms. We will ask you to wash those off. Also, look at your clothing as far as your shirts. They should always display appropriate slogans. From time to time, we see really cool soccer jerseys. However, they're advertising alcoholic beverages on the back. So make sure that these stay at home. Number nine, this regards PE uniforms. The shorts are not allowed. The PE uniform shorts should only be worn during PE, not class time. Other athletic shorts are fine to wear if they meet a couple of requirements. Number one, they should be securely fastened at your waist. Number two, they should not be oversized. And number three, they should meet the requirement of being past your fingertips. Finally, number 10, hair. Unconventional hairstyles are prohibited. This includes multicolored, spiked, mohawk, etc. Natural hair colors only, please. Our final note on dress code is to remember that final dress code authorization and approval remains with campus administration. Prohibited items. This includes iPods, MP3 CD players, and other electronic devices. It also includes laser pointers, electronic games like Nintendo, cameras are not allowed on campus, and skateboards. Any questions in this regard or any questions about what you may or may not bring to campus, you're also asked to reference the student parent handbook for a more complete list of items. With respect to cell phone students, cell phones are expected to be turned off and out of sight once you enter the building in the morning. They should be turned off and out of sight until it's time to go home and your excuse from your last class. If a teacher finds a phone or sees a phone, then there could be a violation. All confiscated phones may be picked up by your parent only. We will not give phones back to students. Violations in this regard can result in disciplinary consequences. So students, keep your phones off out of sight. Negotiables, fighting, certainly not tolerated. Drugs or alcohol or tobacco or weapons of any kind, certainly not tolerated. Any harassing or bullying behavior, not tolerated. This is important. The definition of bullying is engaging in written or verbal expression, expression through electronic means, or physical conduct including a gesture that has been determined to have the effect of physically harming a student or damaging a student's property or placing a student in reasonable fear of harm to the student's person or to the damage of the student's property, or it is sufficiently severe, persistent, or pervasive enough that the action or the threat creates an intimidating or threatening or abusive educational environment for a student. So students, we have resources. We, have, we want you to contact adults, your teacher, counselor, or come see an administrator. We want sixth graders to use the bully box so that they can notify teachers, administrators, and counselors if they have a problem. And then, of course, you have the option of coming to the office and writing a student statement, which we will follow up with as soon as possible. Consequences for bullying can be severe. All reported incidents are investigated and parents are notified. Appropriate disciplinary action will result, and serious incidents can result in off-campus placement. Environmental health. 
This is a new area where no heavy perfumes, colognes, scented lotions, etc. are going to be permitted on the school campus. So the question is, what is heavy? If you can smell it from about three or four feet away, that's pretty heavy. Personal fragrances or deodorants that are aerosols or sprays are not going to be acceptable at the school setting. Students, if you want to use a deodorant, make sure it's a roll-on or a stick. Any questions in this regard should reference the student parent handbook for more information. Let's take a look at a couple of more important items. Attendance and digital citizenship. Mrs. Mascoro, we have some important reminders regarding attendance to share with the students. Yes, we do, Dr. R. But please answer me the question. Why are we dressed like this? I've always wanted to be a superhero. We need to help Bush students that we need them here every day at school. Bush Bulldogs attendance is very important. If you have to be absent from school, then we have a couple of things you need to remember. Tell your parent or guardian to call Bush to report your absence. Students, you must bring a written and signed note by your parent or guardian explaining the reason for your absence. You have two days to bring your note to the attendance clerk. Listen up, Bush Bulldogs. We have a new expectation for you. No more than eight days of absences will be excused with a parent note. That's right, Dr. R. After eight days with a parent note, absences will then be unaccused. Well, Mrs. Mascoro, I guess it is time to get back to campus to check on the students. Remember, Bush Bulldogs, be at school every day. We need you here. Our last topic is digital citizenship. We have a variety of technology available for your use at Bush Middle School. We ask that you please reference the Student Parent Handbook for more thorough and specific information on our acceptable use policy. We would like to point out three important reminders for you. The first one is that you are responsible for your use of technology. We ask that you be a responsible digital citizen. Remember that access is a privilege, not a right. Any intentional misuse will be subject to consequences, and these consequences include suspension, removal to AEP, and or expulsion. In addition, your use of district technologies may be suspended or restricted. So remember to be a good digital citizen. Students, there are support structures in place for living the bulldog creature. These in the classroom are referred to as ready-to-learn slips. And ready-to-learn slips are simply reminders from the teacher to get yourself re-engaged with the lesson and to pay attention to what the teacher expects from you. Some of these minor things that may need redirection include distracting other people, maybe talking without permission. If you have a problem, there is a step plan that each classroom has posted in their room. This begins with a verbal warning and works its way through detentions, lunch detention, after school detention, all the way through referrals to the office, including off-campus placement. With no more than five slips by the winter break, we'll be able to start all over again for the second semester. Some other important items to discuss. Nurse visits. Only students with a pass from a teacher will be allowed into the nurse's office. For those of you who are in between classes that need to go to the nurse's office, make sure you report to the teacher that's expecting you in class and receive a pass from that teacher to the nurse's office so that you may enter the nurse's office without a problem. Fire drills. We want to remain quiet. We want to do this in an orderly fashion. We will exit the buildings quietly, in line, and stay with our classes. Do this orderly and quietly. We return the same way. When we come back to the building, let's stay with our classes and remain in line and do so as quietly as possible. Let's have this be a good year for fire drills. After school activities, these include football games, basketball games, volleyball games, track meets, any NEIS sanctioned event. Your behavior is expected to be the same at that event as at school during a regular school day.
kids. Here we are. We're looking at the bulldog Bush Creek. Bush is famous for it. Um, you, you know, we have Mr. Horry here. Mr. Horry, where did this she bulldog come from? Uh, one of the assistant principals, uh, Ms. Ms. Sheila Moore, kind of reminded us about what we believe in, who we are, and where we really are. And where we really are on the wall. There we asked Mr. Whitmore, the guy in charge of morning announcements every day, <laughs> And he came up with the bulldog. You know what? When you go into that gymnasium, you'll see it on the you'll wall. You'll see it on the wall there, and we're so proud of it. That's why we ask. That's why we ask you to say it every single day. Driven by determination, motivated to reach the goal, tenacious in competition, but, but always respectful. As our tradition of excellence continues, success is our destiny. Integrity above all. So, students, at this time, you're going to review the hazing information with your teachers. After doing this review, you will take a hazing test. Now, your goal is to score 80% or better on this. Teachers, review the test information after you secure each student's test, and make sure you hold on to those tests for future use. Because at Bush, we like to do things the Bush way. The Bush way. The Bush, 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 Bush